Welcome to the Star Pod Log Comic Scene with your hosts, Jeff and Tony. Hi, I'm Jeff Wiley. And I'm Tony Barletta. Welcome to the comic scene on Star Pod Log. Okay, we're recording this on Monday, July the 6th, and the significance of that is earlier this afternoon, DragonCon announced the cancellation for 2020, the first time, I believe, in their 34-year history that they've ever had to cancel the event. Uh, for the yeah. listeners that may, that may not know, uh, DragonCon draws well over 80,000 people to Atlanta every year, and it is a multi-genre fan-run convention. It touches all the bases. It touches um, science fiction. It touches comic books. It touches um, the skepticism. Uh, pro wrestling has a representation. Um, it, it really covers a wide variety of, of, uh, of fandoms. There's about five or six hotels downtown, and each hotel has many different tracks. I think there's some are over 30 different tracks from the whole con. So someone can do all Star Trek panels, all Star Wars panels, all, uh, um, you know, uh, um, science fiction panels, all, all literary panels, all comic book panels. And uh, it's it's just a massive event. It takes over the whole downtown. And um, it's, it's, it's become something that is, it's hard to explain to someone that hasn't been there. Uh, it, is it is probably the, the biggest the biggest cosplay con of the, in the country. Um, I would say most of those eighty five thousand or so that show up, most of those people are all in costume, and they all have different costumes every day. So it's it's just like walk the biggest Halloween party you could think of with the best costumes ever, and uh, some really amazing panels. You'll meet really amazing uh, actors from TV shows, authors, comic book artists. Um, you know, it's a great time. <laughs> so I this year, this year it's going virtual. Well, I mentioned that um, there is a comics track and something in the previous episodes that Tony and I recorded, something that has never been brought up, and that is Tony here runs the comics track for Dragon Con and has for a few years now. Well, one, uh, one of three directors. Comics okay. is actually so large, there are three directors. So there's one head director of senior director for the whole comics, um, and then there's another director for just the artist alley. I am the director for the programming, um, you know. So they get the guests and they handle the artist alley, and then my job is put all the programming and panels together. I think last year we we had a use of two separate rooms in at artist alley for most of the con. Plus, we used some very large rooms in, in some of the hotels as well and had put on about 50 panels last year over the course of five days. Okay, so let's uh, try something a little different than we have done in past episodes. I'm going to interview Tony as uh, one of the track directors for Dragon Con, and we're going to talk about um, the event and the way things have unfolded over the last several months and the way um, – you know, the announcement today and the potential fallout from it. So let's go back to the beginning. And how did you originally get involved in Dragon Con? Um, it's just a few people I knew um, decided to get together, just a few of us and uh, I think it was four, and um, pitched some ideas together about putting panels on for Dragon Con and, and what would make panels. I think we all love Dragon Con and had some ideas about some panels we'd like to see. So, you know, at the time, I think uh, someone knew the, the senior director there at the time for comics and pitched the ideas to him. So he said, okay, put on a few fan panels. So uh, originally, we were going to be putting on fan panels. <clears throat> Somehow that year, uh, it became um, that, that the four of us ended up programming the whole, the whole schedule. Not programming the whole schedule, but... Um, we put a lot of ideas together and a lot of descript panel descriptions together, and a lot of our we were surprised that a lot of our ideas made it into the track. Um, and it turned out that was the last year that the the person who had the programming director job that was his last year doing it. 
and since a lot of our ideas ended up on the, the, the lineup, then it it fell to one of us uh, to inherit his job because they liked what we did. So they basically said, you know, just expand on what you started and make it even bigger. So we did that for a few years. So I was a volunteer for, I think, about three years, maybe four, three, around three years or so. Um, I was just you know, part of the team that came up with ideas and uh, put a few panels on the track, uh, decided which ones I wanted to moderate, and, you know, I just did it as a team. And then, for whatever reason, at, at the end of about three years of that, two, two three years of that, maybe two, um, we all just went our separate ways, um, for whatever reason. And I was still there. Um, and I never stepped down from my job, but as, as a volunteer at the time. And so they needed someone to come in and uh, put it all together for them. And so I, at that time I realized, you know, as, as a volunteer, I'd learned a lot from the, the friends I had around me at the time and was able to uh, take what I learned and um, put it all together. And I was able to take on the job as programming director. Uh, the first year, the first year we didn't have a programming director. So that in between year, I came up with all the panels, and we just didn't have a programming director. So I kind of did the job. I just wasn't – I hadn't inherited the title yet. So I kind of put it together right at the last minute. Um, but it worked great, and we had a great round of panels. We brought in a couple people I knew would be great for it, um, you know, and they ended up uh, uh, hitting, hitting off so well as friends. They now have a comic book score together and all, so that's pretty awesome. Um, so – after that, then I inherited the title of self comics programming director. And like I said, I took what I learned from the past and just kept expanding, expanding, and expanding. And uh, the con work by ideas, you know, I, I learned that I, you know, how to come up with lots of ideas. I'd look at how to incorporate as many guests into as many panel ideas as I could and try to figure out as a fan what excites me and what would excite other fans. And, I've been doing a pretty good job because when I when I inherited the track, I think we started putting on somewhere around um, I'm guessing around twenty five to thirty panels maybe at the time. And like I said last year I'd gotten it all the way up to fifty. So, um, you know, people like people to come like what I do and have called me so, so I just kept expanding to the track as, as much as I could to give comic book fans as much uh, programming to look forward to during the, their time there. Okay, I want to ask you some questions about uh, the coronavirus and the pandemic as it relates to Dragon Con. So, um, the pandemic began uh, really in the United States in February or March. When when news of the pandemic began to to spread in the United States and the virus began to spread. Did you sense at that point that Dragon Con would be affected in any way? Uh, no, I didn't. I mean, I, as far as I know, the senior directors um, were the ones working behind the scenes to try to figure out Dragon Con's answer to coronavirus. Uh, so we're not, so all the, each director is in charge of a different track. So, each of us, you know, weren't in on those conversations, perhaps, but we knew that things were going on behind the scenes as to how would Dragon Con deal with that issue. Um, so for us, the uh, regular track directors, we did, it was business as usual. We just had to come up with the programming. Um, I think the deadline is usually the end of June, so we just had to look at the guest list. And I I actually submitted my uh, about 42 panel ideas that I thought uh, were pretty strong ideas based on the guests we had because I knew Dragon Con was trying very hard behind the scenes to to make the con happen. And, you know, unfortunately today we found out it, it wasn't able to happen and we understand why. But, you know, in, in case Dragon Con was able to figure out a way to do it, uh, our job as, as track directors was to have have panels in there so if if they gave us the green light, it could go on. Um, so I don't know if people realize, you know, that how far the planning actually got. Because you know, if they were able to do it, they'd need they'd need programs. 
the big panels. Well, that kind of leads me to my next question, and that is I know that the planning process for each track is a year in the making. You basically start planning mm-hmm. for next year's Dragon Con when that year's ends. I w- so, well, I mean, I mean, some do. I wouldn't say I do, but, you know, I mean, um, it, ideas occur all, all year round, but, I mean, I, I don't start really looking at how to combine guests and come up with panel ideas until maybe uh, – Spring, uh, late spring, I'd say I really start in earnest trying to, to figure out the best, uh, some ideas to put, put down and at that point. But yeah, um, sure. I mean, there are, there are lots of things all year round that are in planning. And I mean, you know, I mean, senior directors are, are lining up guests, uh, well in, in the winter months and such that, you know, the cons, uh, hibernating. Was, was there any point, uh, since March, where you thought to yourself or admitted to yourself that Dragon Con was just not going to happen this year? No, I mean, I, I trusted the senior directors to make the right choice. Um, and I knew they were trying to see if there was a way that could be done. I think eventually they decided, you know, even, you know, trying to figure out a way to social, have social distancing in a con of, 85,000 is probably not going to work. Uh, I think other things were looked at and, you know, even if you have less attendance, can you still make the con work with social distancing? Um, I think, I think that's the kind of thing they were looking at there. Um, so eventually they made the, the only decision that, that made sense after, I mean, they, they took their con and they, they definitely tried to look at that from every angle they possibly could to see if we could work out. Um, and so they made the only decision they could, which is now to turn it into a virtual con. So it's going to have programming. It'll just be online, and people can get a taste of it for, from the, their homes this year. For I mean, you know, it, we're all sad that it's not going to happen because there's nothing else like it, you know, in the, in the country, really, but especially those of us that live in Atlanta look forward to it every year, but this gives everybody else a chance to find out a little bit about, you know, why we love it so much. Um, so you, you've you talked about already some of the panels that you had um, imagined bringing to life this year. Can you tell us any of those panels? Can you talk about anything that um, that you had on the books that you were looking forward to and more specifically – uh, that you might be able to bring to light uh, at virtual Dragon Con. Yeah, I'm waiting to hear uh, some more about how how we're making the virtual con happen. So I'm going to wait and and find out some more info on that. So maybe some of those 42 panel ideas, maybe a few of them do end up becoming virtual panels this year. Um, you know, I always I always try to enjoy incorporating anniversary celebrations into uh, programming. So I was going to look for what characters are celebrating anniversaries. And we worked on a few this year, so maybe something like that ends up becoming virtual. I mean, that's a possibility. Um, also, I mean, we had some great guests. Dragon Con had done a great job of lining up, a real, starting a really awesome guest list rolling. Um, they had brand-new artists. I mean, uh, Kevin Nowlin has ever been here before. It would have been great having a spotlight panel for him. Um, you know, um, Bill Reinhold uh, worked at Marvel for a long time. I know him from the Punisher comics. I really enjoyed his work on Punisher. He also was an anchor and inked some really great um, artists over the years. That was another interesting thing. We had some really big name guests that uh, were great pencilers like Kevin Nowlin and and Bill Reinhold, they're, they're great pencilers, but they're also great anchors. And that was that could be an interesting um, way to look at things, too. I mean, uh, you know, uh, we always enjoy having kids' panels. It's always fun for kids. I know last year the artist probably decided to do a little um, uh, sketchbook. The kids could get a little free sketch from different artists. and was really successful. So we always enjoy having panels for the kids to enjoy. 
uh, you know, CPAC, the comics professionals, uh, enjoy always having a, an academic discussion every year about s some various topics in comics that are, are usually well attended and fans look forward to. Um, you know, I think I put a, a big variety this year of using the guests that we had. Uh, you know, we had a, um, uh, an artist, uh, who, who's a, a great Disney artist too, and I, I don't think, I think he'd ever been to Dragon Con. He did beautiful Disney art. It would have been great to, you know, highlight so, some of his work too. Um, so, you know, it's a shame we can't highlight some of those artists' work, but, uh, there is next year, and, and hopefully, uh, some of them can come back and we can work some of those panels out next year, and maybe a few of them will be able to do virtually. Are there any unique challenges to bringing uh, a virtual Dragon Con to life? And I guess what I mean by that is this is, you know, these are unprecedented times. And uh, so many events have gone virtual, streaming on one platform or another. And Dragon Con may have an advantage in that there's been some something of a template laid out already from previous cons on how to do that. But from your perspective, is there any uh, – what are the unique challenges of bringing an event like Dragon Con to life online, uh, you know, uniquely? I have to say I really don't know. I'm going to have to wait and find out myself. Um, I don't know about what technology um, is planning to be used. I mean, when we do these – uh, videos for Start Plum World that we use Google Voice is what I've learned how to use well. So uh, I'll certainly have to learn how to use something different, I suppose, for um, an actual virtual con. But I know we're going to have other people out there that are more knowledgeable about technology than myself that will be aiding in that as well. Do you have any specific um, hopes for Virtual Dragon Con as far as now that the con's not going to happen the way it has historically, is there anything specific um, in the way it will be laid out this year that you're hoping takes place? You know, I mean, I hope the fans that are missing the experience that Dragon Con gives them every day weekend will have an opportunity to immerse themselves in discussions that – make them happy uh that you know you know they'll, they'll hear people talking about uh their favorite tv shows they'll hear people talking about their favorite sci-fi movies they'll hear people talking about their favorite comic books and comic book characters and and i mean you know with everything we've been through this year uh collectively i think you know a little bit even if it's a virtual con we're not getting together in person uh, but i, I think an event like that in someone's home, you know, it brings a little happiness to everybody. And it brings people that have my experience to come a chance to, you know, see a little bit about uh, the passion behind sci-fi and comics and, and all the things that go into making Dragon Con and what, why everybody's so passionate about it. And they can uh, stop themselves a little bit of that. All right. So are there any final thoughts on Dragon Con 2020? that you would like to leave the listeners with. Um, like I said, the format that you and I normally do is much more of a back-and-forth conversation, but um, I, I want to interview you as uh, one of the track directors and one of the people that kind of um, makes things happen at the track. And I'd like to know, um, you know, your thoughts on DragonCon 2020 and – you know, how you hope it goes? Well, I mean, at the end of the day, the, the senior directors did as much as they could to try to see if it was possible to make it happen. Um, and I, I think that excited a lot of people that, that there was a possibility we could do it. And, you know, behind the scenes, I know I sure did my part in putting together panels so that if we were given a green light, we could put stuff together and put on some great panels. Um, so it wasn't wasn't a case where we weren't doing anything behind the scenes. We, we had to be ready in case we were able to go. Um, but then when, when we hear that it's not going on, we certainly understand. 
and we understand that, you know, an abundance of caution is necessary. Um, and now we just transition the, the fun and excitement that we could drive in person uh, to a more safe environment virtually. So it's, it's going to be the first time that the Dragon Trail has ever been virtual for the first time. But, you know, it, it's, it's still it's still kind of a, um, even though we're all in each other's own homes, uh, I think just the fact that so many are going to be watching the same thing at the same time, uh, it'll feel a little bit like Dragon Tron, and it'll feel enough like Dragon Tron to, you know, at least put a smile on someone's face for, for a day or a weekend. And I think that's, that's the main goal. Well, I, as a fan, appreciate what you do, and uh, you know, you and I have been friends for a really long time, and I know and you and I talk pretty regularly throughout the week. So I know um, the thought and the effort that you put into the track, and I'm really grateful um, to you for that. So well, thank you so much I, for kind words. I'm I'm looking forward to, you know, I, I mean, we're all disappointed that Dragon Con is not going to happen the way we're used to, but I'm glad they're going to give us something. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what they offer us this year. Yeah, uh, I think uh, what, you know when we end up putting the virtual uh, panels together, I think, uh, like I said, they don't put a smile on people's face. A much needed uh, break from reality for a weekend. All right. So if Star Pod Log is crazy enough to have Tony and I back in the future, then we'll come up with different topics and something else uh, comics related to discuss, but we thought this was the most timely issue we could talk about for this episode. Um, so make, we'd like to know what you think about Dragon Con and, and what uh, transpired this year. So make sure you give uh, our video a like, give us a share, drop us a comment. And uh, you can also find Star Pod Log all over social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, those are the ones I know about. <laughs> yeah, uh, thanks for Star Pod One for having us back. Uh, great to join with everybody, uh, and thanks for listening. Thanks again for listening to the comics scene on Star Pod Log. And once again, my name is Jeff Wiley. And I'm Tony Barlow. Thanks for listening. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and join our Facebook group. Live long and may the force be with you. Nanu Nanu. Nanu.